A big thank you to our moderator, Professor Audrey Yue. Thank you. A big thank you, Dr. Venka Purushothaman. And also thank you to Mr. Joe Sidek. Thank you. Can we step forward for a group photograph, please? Dr. Venka, Professor Yue, can we invite you to step forward, please? Thank you. Please look forward. Smile. Wonderful second panel. We have never been here before. Social capital in the new world. So fantastic, wonderful discussion we have had after lunch. So can we give once again the panel a big round of applause? Thank you very much to our panel members. Also a big thank you to our moderator as well. And can I have Mrs. Daniel, please kindly remain on stage for the closing address, please. Th thank you to our panelists. Thank, thank you to our moderator. I'd like to invite you back to your seats. Thank you. Well, this is tough. It's the end of a long day, and I don't propose to, uh, uh, to stretch the, the, the afternoon too much further out. Uh, I just wonder how to close uh, the conference. It's a very difficult task when you've heard such rich conversations and such wonderful insights. So I thought that maybe I'll just take a leave from uh, the book of my good friend, uh, Joe, and get up close and personal, right? <laughs> so uh, from where I'm sitting, so I've been 10 years in the arts now, and I'm still involved in so many cultural institutions, either directly or as, you know, partner to so many illustrious institutions here. So what, what is my takeaway uh, for today, right? I've heard all the rich uh, uh, ideas. Um, I, I think that uh, for me, coming out of the dark days of uh, COVID, um, it gives me hope and optimism for going forward. Uh, what I heard today is quite affirmative for us in the arts. Uh, I think, uh, well, very loud and clear, I, I uh, heard validation of my own personal convictions from John. Uh, I do believe that uh, it is for us to plug into the creative economy. Uh, the arts is central and uh, the creative economy gives new possibilities for us to bring forth and amplify the value and the impact of the arts. Value is always uh, spoken in the, the, and, and seen in the eyes and, and words of the other, not about ourselves. We don't affirm value by ourselves. It is for others to affirm value. So if arts want, uh, we want to be relevant, we want to go forward, we've got to plug into the other domains. And for us in institutions and uh, as administrators, as uh, practitioners as leaders in the arts, I think we have great opportunity. It is for us to build those link linkages to the adjacencies. And I think that uh, is going to be very exciting for us because, of course, uh, technology innovation has given us new possibilities. What I liked very much as well and which struck me very uh, deeply was when John talked about how uh, technology and culture must be in harmony uh, lest we descend into dystopia. And if you think about it, that is so true, right? Because as John says, technology makes a lot of uh, uh, sense and gi gives a lot of gains to the material world. But you can't connect and it makes no sense if culture did not bring the inner world to connect us as humanity, right, to the outer world. And so if technology was going to pick up pace and it was going to be faster and more complex, then surely then if we believe that, then culture becomes even more important. So we've got an even bigger role to play. So as technology picks up, we shouldn't be afraid of it. We should say that we've got to move with it and we are going to help make sense of things around us. So the arts can certainly play that role. So I thought that was very uh, encouraging for us. The third thing that struck me was that, uh, I, and I love that, and I know my friend Huini, uh, and I, Chi Yen has joined us as well, uh, both of them lead the heritage sector. I think it was wonderful to hear that in Asia, and of course in Singapore, uh, what we have always believed uh, uh, is, is, we heard that from John, that uh, we have stories to tell, and cultural heritage is actually something very dear to us. We are a young nation with an old soul. Uh, we look like we're young, we are young, but actually we're anchored on a thousand years of history. I was just telling uh, some, some of you folks here who are visiting us uh, that uh, we've unearthed artifacts that tell us that we are, well, hundreds of years, if not a thousand years old, and that's, that's wonderful. We are in a multicultural uh, uh, region, and if we want to understand ourselves and our place in the region, that is expressed through heritage and art. So again, something that gives me a lot of uh, uh, confidence and, and hope that we can play a part. Um, I think also that uh, um, the, the, the idea that, uh, that uh, culture is core to everything is, uh, is something that uh, 
in the, in the, second, the first panel, rather, the first panel, I, I think even as we feel that in the arts we can do a lot, I think it was a very timely reminder in the second panel that we put consumers and audiences in the center of everything we do. Things are changing out there. Consumers define markets, they define, they define what we should be doing. And sometimes in the arts or as institutions especially, we're very guilty of, uh, as many of you have pointed out, trying to define things, trying to architect things, trying to put structures when in fact what we should do is just be facilitative and able and understand that sometimes, uh, much as we try, we are very much behind consumer tastes and preferences. And so we, we constantly have to remind ourselves, and it is quite true that we are quite behind if we are not immersed in the, into the community and be a part of what is going on out there. So it calls for collaborative models and obviously calls for co-creation and for working with uh, citizens, very much front and centre of what we are now all asked to do, which is to move along with the citizens. And uh, I think it was very true what I heard. I, I, I certainly saw it in COVID, because where I was sitting in the Arts Council, in COVID, a lot of stuff that we had was either irrelevant or couldn't keep up. We had to innovate as we went along. We were winging it as we went along because our entire structure in, in Singapore, well, uh, thank you very much, Joe, for being a fan, fan uh, such a big fan of Singapore, but actually, uh, precisely because we are very organized, we're also not as nimble as we should be, right? So uh, I think a lot of our constructs were based on the fact that there was an employer-employee relationship. And as John pointed out, I think because we are now in an in a, uh, economy where there's looseness, COVID was a wake-up call because we saw the needs of being a lot more nimble, understanding that many creatives out there, especially in our sector, are in fact uh, have many uh, identities. They are probably pivoting to many, many types of uh, um, forms of work to earn a living. And I think as we move forward, we're going to have to learn as institutions and policy makers how to respond. And I loved very much what Ming Lu said. It is also the art of how you do it. How do you do it in a manner where you allow a looseness so that there's creativity by the point where actually you need to come in, you need to give that structure. So that is really always about sense making and always about being with people and, and, and understanding and sense make and, and feeling the pulse as you go along. You, you don't prejudge these things too much or be too prescriptive upstream. So a lot of learnings there for us. And I loved uh, also um, the last panel. Uh, I think it uh, again was very affirmative. I think uh, social capital is so important. The words trust re resonate a lot with me. I think in a very complex, turbulent world, it's uh, ever so much more important and so difficult to forge and sustain trust. So that is something that we want to work with. And I think, again, the arts has a great deal uh, to do with this. Uh, I think the, the last panel, especially, we had educators. So Audrey, Venka, I think uh, you, you remind us about how important it is to invest deeply in education and our youths. Uh, I, I also think that, uh, like Joe, I think they define, I've got kids. And I think that it is they who tell us where to go and we should listen and not us as parents or you know, as aging people think that we know better. Every, every, it's always said that every generation thinks that the next generation doesn't do better than them, right? But that's so not true. And I think we have a lot to do in, in ensuring that the arts can actually forge a social capital and uh, have that trust with citizens. And the work ahead is, is difficult, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, we, we can put on thinking caps. And someone else said um, earlier, and I forget who, oh, no, it was Adrian on the screen, and he said that he was always taken aback by how fast and how, how clever our responses are. So we just trust that, don't worry that the arts can't, can't respond. We have our ways. We will get back, we, we will look and feel, and then we'll what, what comes out of it is quite astounding because fundamentally in the arts, it's all about creativity and there are a lot of very creative talents around. So on that note, I want to thank everybody, great speakers, and thank you participants for staying with us the whole day. And it would be very remiss of me if I didn't thank my wonderful team. I don't know how a very small team in the Culture Academy did this, but thank you very much, folks. Without you, this would not be possible. Thank you. And have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Mrs. Daniel. Okay, so I know all of you are excited to leave. Just give me two minutes, okay, before you leave. Firstly, a big thank you once again to our keynote speaker as well as our two panels as well, wonderful discussions. Can we give them a big round of applause once again? Thank you very much for your wonderful insights today. 
Okay, so four points. Now, the first is this. Now, if you look to the screen, now we have a feedback form. If you can please help us, we'll greatly appreciate that. Uh, as you heard earlier on uh, from Mrs. Daniel, this is our fifth edition. So we hope for more editions to come. So let us know how we did well. Let us know what we can do better as well. You can also scan the QR code behind your name badge as well. So we greatly appreciate any feedback that you may have. Now, second, now tomorrow morning, there will be a fireside chat with our keynote speaker, Mr. John Newbegin, OBE. Now, he will be uh, with us. Uh, so I will be changing the slide in just a moment once all of you have scanned it. Okay, if not, you can scan behind the badge as well. So let's go on to the next slide. So this is our fireside chat tomorrow with our keynote speaker, Mr. Newbegin. Uh, so that's tomorrow at 10.30 a.m., glass room at National Gallery. All right, if you'd like to sign up for it, you can scan the QR code. Now the topic, as you see, what it means to be a creative cultural worker for the future, how we can redefine and reclaim this scope of work and address the power equities therein. So if you'd like to join us tomorrow morning, 10.30 a.m., uh, please scan the QR code and register. We hope to see you there. Now thirdly, a gentle reminder that all of you will be able to enjoy free admission to the galleries uh, and exhibitions here at National Gallery Singapore with the gallery voucher that is found inside your tote bag. Okay, so that is valid for three months. Uh, all you need to do is to show the gallery voucher at the Visitor Services Center to get an admission sticker. Once again, it is valid for three months. All right, lastly, for those of our guests who are involved in the social program, please meet us at the foyer at 4.25 p.m. All right, so four things, two minutes. With that, thank you very much on behalf of Culture Academy Singapore. Thank you all so much for being here, attending all the way to the end, and we hope to see all of you next time. Take care, stay safe, and uh, have a good week ahead. Thank you, everyone.